we went ahead and put in a drainage system on an airport. Airports are so flat that it's next to impossible to drain the water. It's a big problem in the industry, and we're always working towards new solutions to take care of these water problems on airports. We have really small green belts. They're very narrow, and you have all this sheet water off of these hangers and all the concrete. There's no permeable surfaces, just these really small green belts. So what we went ahead and did, we went ahead and we basically put in one of our outdoor sump pump systems with a 20-foot chamber. And we went under the road with the discharge line to a neighboring ditch to this airport. It turned out pretty good. The client is really, really happy. His hanger is dry. The ground around the hanger is dry. This was never the case. They were getting water in the hanger. We did an open French drain around the outside of the airplane hanger. You can see here it's a massive open French drain, you know, a couple of feet in width. And we made sure to catch all the rooftop water and to take it to our outdoor sump system. Of course, we ran all the downspouts to pop-ups with a turf restrictor plate. Now, we did this job a couple months ago, and you can see the grass is already growing over the turf restrictor plate, but it's doing its job. All right, let's take you to the install. Welcome to the French Drain Man channel. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood, and I'm going to take you along on an installation that we did at an airport. This airport was so flat, the drainage was so bad. To make matters even worse, the ditch that they did have literally was a ditch to nowhere. So once this ditch filled up with water, all these airplane hangars would just end up flooded. As you can imagine, the owners of these hangars, they've just had enough. It was time to do something about it. So we're going to put in a bad seed sump system, full frame, with 20 feet of additional chamber. I'm not messing around here. I know the kind of water we're dealing with. I know the area. Uh, we have so much water coming off acres and acres and acres of airplane hangers. And we're basically going to have to pump this ditch dry and get this water to the other side of the street where there's another ditch. So I'm going to kind of speed up these files for you because I'm trying to boil down, you know, four or five hours of video files. The dig, as you know, is tedious and that's like the longest part of the install. So we did that in the morning. So here it is. It's afternoon. It's time to put in all the six inch pipe. Big systems. We don't mess around. I want six inch pipe when I'm dealing with really, really, really big areas where you're talking acreage, a lot of acreage. And I could have just ran a quad pack, but I was worried about the big service trucks, the different things that happen on this airport. I didn't want to have any issues. If they drive a fuel tanker over this system, it's going to work. So we do have one six inch perforated pipe and we have one six inch solid because these airplane hangers do have a roof runoff system. They do have gutters. They do have the three by four by four. I mean, that's the big boy in Michigan, you know, for downspouts that we're hooking up. And I'm going to show you how we do that hookup. All right, here's our bad seed with 20 feet additional chamber. That is really cool. So we're going to be able to keep up with any storm. If the pump falls behind, it's not going to be a problem. And you can see how we're going from the 3x4x4 gutter adapter to a 6 inch. I'll get you up close here. All right, a simple and easy way to go from, this is a three by four by four downspout. It could be a, 
a three by three by four in Canada or a two by three by four here in the US. This one happens to be again a three by four by four. So we have our full assembly here. You know, we have dual wall pipe up here. You know, we are vented and this is beautiful. I can run a camera through here. It's just fantastic. It's a great clean out. So we tape it up to a piece of four inch because we want to take it to six inch. They cut this airport with big tractors and all kinds of crazy shit happens here on this uh, airport. I'm just going to be honest. So I've seen trucks, you know, big heavy trucks driving all over the place. And we just take a four to six. So go ahead and grab a coupler, you know, when you're doing something like this, purchase a coupler, four to six. You want to use some really stretchy, super sticky tape made for the outdoors. This is really flexible. This lasts 200 years, and it won't crack like PVC cement, PVC glue, a PVC weld. It won't crack like that. This joint can move in the freeze and thaw, you know, as the ground is saturated and as it dries. All kinds of conditions, when clay shrinks, it pulls and it moves on pipe. So that happens everywhere in the United States. Honestly, I don't care where you are in the globe. If you're dealing with clay and it shrinks and pulls, you know, a PVC glue joint, that's where it ends up cracking. It lets the tree roots in. All kinds of uh, things start to domino effect with that. But this is a textbook 4-inch, 6-inch. How we do it with a super sticky, super stretchy, 200-year tape bars. That's solid. And then we have a French drain with our roof runoff system in the same trench. The guys did a beautiful job. It's perfect. All right, so you know all about this assembly. We love this assembly. We have a clean out right there, so it's super easy to run a hose through it or a camera, or if you want to stick your shop vac down in it and suck anything out that might have got, you know, pushed through the downspout, underground downspout system. But there you go, you just need a few feet of four inch and then take it to six and have a reducer that basically reduces you down from the six to the four. So that's how we connect four inch pipe to six inch pipe. So right now you can see Francisco's holding a pop-up emitter with a turf restrictor plate because we want to keep that up, you know, uh, you want to have that set at the right height, at the right level. And Cal, he's over here dumping really big buckets. Uh, that's Valentine now. We had a couple of ditch witches rolling. This was a big job. There was a lot of stone. There was a lot of haul out. There was a lot of pipe. There was just a lot of everything. So I, that's why I sped this video up, kind of boiled it down so I didn't bore you guys to tears. Tried to show you all the cool stuff. So that's the Bad Seed Full Frame Outdoor Sump Pump System. And we have a 20-foot chamber on it that we put on, an added 20-foot chamber. That way, if we're having a really big rain event and it can't keep up and it falls a little bit behind, the chamber will act as on-site storage that is ever so important and then when the rain lets up and subsides it can continue pumping 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 until it pumps that chamber down it's a dynamite uh, setup it's all we use outdoors are the chambered sump pump systems if you follow this channel you know that we have you know dozens of variations this happens to be the one that we use the most this is the one that we're using you know, dom predominantly outdoors, this is the one. Indoors, I'm always going to use the uh, Screaming Demon. I mean, just that it was built for a couple of different specialty uses. I love the Screaming Demon. If you're going to put a check valve on your outdoor system and you live in the south and you can get away with that, Screaming Demon, because you're going to suck every last drop out of the chamber because of that sump. The pump sits lower than the chamber. But here in Michigan, we can't do that. We can't use check valves. And, you know, in the north here, we got to build them different. We got to build them with winter in mind. So we have a heater in this. We're heating it, and we don't have a check valve. So we pump the water up, and then we have it sloped out of here, and we're born under the road. And, you know, that's a whole nother uh, process. I, I didn't 
bore you to tears with that because it's going to take a few hours for all that. But I just wanted you to see this airport with all the hangars, what we're doing, the dried up. And until the next video.